coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. FAI World Drone Racing Championships. AMA Expo West starts tomorrow. And FAA restricts drones operating near DOD and USCG mobile assets. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Some 128 of the world's best drone racing pilots from 34 separate countries are making the journey to Shenzhen, the heart of the drone economy, for the four-day competition that runs from November 1st through 4th, 2018. At the final count, we have 34 national teams with a total of 128 competitors. That includes 43 juniors and 12 women, said FAI Jury President Bruno Deller. Traveling with them, he said, will be a further 132 registered team managers, helpers, and official supporters. The drone racing pilots and their crews are heading to Shenzhen, a city near Hong Kong that is often labeled China's Silicon Valley, to compete against each other for prestigious team and individual FAI medals in what will be the first ever FAI World Drone Racing Championships. Host nation, the People's Republic of China, will be fielding the biggest team, with eight competitors, including three wildcard competitors. As organizer, China is entitled to field three wildcard competitors. Several countries are fielding a full team of five. Spain, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, Poland, Russia, Chinese Taipei, and the USA all have teams of four men plus one woman. In the next show minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Did you know that most of the Part 107 waivers submitted to the FAA are daylight waivers? As of June 2018, over 90% of waivers are disapproved. The AMA, in conjunction with Alaris Unmanned Systems, is committed to increasing the waiver approval rate for our members who conduct flights under Part 107. In support of this commitment, we have developed a presentation that will serve to increase the approval rate for FAA 107.29 Daylight Waivers. Check out the information at amaflightschool.org slash get started slash daywaiver. The Chula Vista, California Police Department has launched a pilot program that places UAVs in the role of first responders, and so far the aircraft are proving their worth. The department is dispatching aircraft for some 911 calls. In the first week, the aircraft responded to 30 such calls, including one for felony domestic violence, where a drone hovered over a man suspected of stabbing a woman with a knife was hiding. Officers used the drone's camera to determine when the man was unarmed, and he was taken into custody. It was a matter of time before we heard about the criminalization of errant drone operations. Now a Canadian pilot is reportedly the first busted, fined, and jailed for improper drone operations. A judge in the Northwest Territories approved a plea bargain for a pilot who repeatedly lied to police and flew a drone in airspace used by planes, taking off and landing at the Yellowknife Airport. The conviction is reportedly the first of its kind. The Aero News Network, which produces the AMA Drone Report, as well as quite a few other programs, is looking for talented people to join us. We are looking for additional airborne program staff with skills in front and behind the camera to join our webcast team. Strong camera, video editing, and presentation skills are required.
We're also looking for aviation writers and reporters, as well as an additional sales and marketing representative to reach out to the aviation community to help market Airborne and Aero News. If interested, please send your resume to jim at aero-news.net. That was our drone minute. Now back to the rest of the news. If you're not on your way to Pomona, California, you're about to miss out on something very cool. The 20th Annual AMA Expo West will be at the Fairplex Exposition Center in Pomona, California for the first time on November 2nd through 4th with a new expanded program. This three-day event takes full advantage of Expo's new location, with loads of family-friendly activities, including indoor and outdoor flying, a flying light show, drone racing, and much more. Additional attractions at the AMA Expo West include Flying Under the Stars, utilizing the 8-acre outdoor flying field on Friday, November 2nd and Saturday, November 3rd. Competitive hobbyists and champions Ashley Heath and Jay Stusha will be featured in a flying light show. This field will also be open during the day and feature historic warbird air show, racing, and combat competitions. Kids take flight on Sunday, November 4th. Kids ages 8 to 17 will have the opportunity to fly in an airplane at a nearby airfield. And guest speaker series. Attendees will hear firsthand from prominent members of the aviation community through the AMA Expo West Speaker Series. This year's guests include Al Bowers, Chief Scientist at NASA's Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center, and Mason Hutchinson, a design engineer with Scaled Composites. In addition, hundreds of exhibitors will be attending the Expo, highlighting new products and offering demonstrations. At the request of DOD and the Coast Guard, the FAA is using its existing authority to address concerns about potentially malicious drone operations over certain high-priority maritime operations. The FAA, in cooperation with DOD and USCG, is restricting drone flights near U.S. Navy and USCG vessels operating in the vicinity of Naval Base Kitsap in Washington State and Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay in Georgia. Drone operators are required to maintain a distance of at least 3,000 feet laterally and 1,000 feet vertically from these vessels. These special security instructions provided in an FAA NOTAM are effective immediately. The full text of this NOTAM and additional information on these special security instructions including a visual depiction and geospatial definition of the relevant airspace, is available on the FAA website. The FAA also warns drone operators that these USN and USCG vessels are authorized by law to take protective action against drones perceived to be safety or security threats. Further operators who do not comply with the FAA's special security instructions also may be subject to enforcement action. In a separate special notice advisory notum, also effective immediately, the FAA strongly advises drone operators to remain clear of DOD and Department of Energy facilities and mobile assets, as well as USCG vessels. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.